do is just scroll up to the part where I created these, my all suppliers um, and all uh, cat categories. I'm going to copy that. I just did a copy. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to paste it right in front of the return view. So that took care of that. And before I return the view here, I'm going to paste it again. And down here before I return the view, I'm going to paste it again. Now obviously there can be some refactoring taking place here. So what I'm doing is I am repopulating these two uh, select lists uh, before I return to the view. Now let's try it again. And here we are, so let's create a new one. Um, we'll make a mistake this time. Um, let's go to Bill Beans number two. That didn't get created last time. And let's leave these drop downs the same. Um, let's say, um, again, a box. Uh, let me have a unit price, which is non numeric. Uh, units in stock, uh, three. Uh, units on order, six. Reorder level two and discontinued false and um, click on create. Now remember we have a problem here with unit price. So here you see that we had an error displayed. It says create was unsuccessful. Please correct the errors and try again. And notice that down below here we have uh, a highlight uh, on unit price and we have a little asterisk. Now, um, this is coming from the error summary at the top, and this is the asterisk that was displayed in the validation. What if we want the error, error to actually be down here? Well, let me show you how to do that. Stop the application. I'm going to go to the Create page, and um, that was Unit Price, so um, right here. If I take the asterisk out of here, I'm talking about the validation message, remove the asterisk, I can say something here like um, must be numeric. Okay, so I put my own error message in there. Let's run it again and see what happens if I make the mistake again. So here we'll try to create it again. Again, we'll call it the same thing: bills, beans, number two. Uh, we'll leave all the other stuff. I can just put gobbledygook in there. But let's put the unit price there, which is not legitimate. Um, for two, uh, three units on order, reorder level uh, 55, uh, discounted, uh, false. I should put a checkbox here, by the way, um, which would make this a lot nicer. Now, we're going to have an error here, so let me click on Create. And now notice that we have an actual error message down below, must be numeric instead of the silly little asterisk. So this was done automatically for me. Uh, by the attempt to put uh, data into a database with type mismatches. So what about that other error condition, that one that I hard-coded or I uh, wrote in myself? Um, that error said basically that the um, reorder level, uh, the reorder level must be greater than zero. So let's, let's try that and see what happens. Let's run that one. So we'll do another create new. We're stuck with bills, beans number two. And um, gobbledygook, um, unit price six, now units in stock five, uh, units on order six. Now here I'm going to put a minus one, so that's not going to be okay. And I'm going to say discontinued false again. And again, I could easily make that a checkbox, which I should. Now we should get an error associated with this. This is a business rule. This is not a data type mismatch. Uh, and of course, I have to write my business rule uh, error checks as opposed to having the system check that. So let's see what happens. And now you can see the create was unsuccessful, blah, blah, blah. Reorder level must be greater than or equal to zero. And it points to the situation down there. So that, uh, that takes care of the fundamentals of creating a simple application. Um, Let's see, I have one more thing to add uh, just to make uh, it a little bit uh, more complete application. So um, I'll do one more uh, short video uh, using this and then we'll start talking about the right way to do business rules.